Hello YouTube, uh, this is Ivan again uh, with Inktronics, Inktronics blog, uh, coming back with another video. This time I kind of want to focus on pens that I have ordered or I have purchased uh, from pen makers. So these are more of a bespoke I guess you could say or custom pens or semi-custom pens. But uh, I want to discuss some differences that somebody who is new to fountain pens may not know. Uh, so let's start off with these pens here in the middle. And I actually have some of these pens, uh, well two of them are made from, uh, by the same person. So uh, it's going to be interesting here. These pens here, these are what I would call kit pens. Uh, if you don't know what a kit pen is, basically the uh, person turns on a lathe a portion of the pen. They they don't make the whole pen themselves. So, and you'll you'll notice something right away. They have a similar look, especially these three right here. These uh, these here. These are. Uh, come from kits that are very similar so what what happens is the pen maker let's choose this one buys a kit and that kit contains the finial the clip a cap band and probably some sort of end finial too and then when you open this up it'll have the section in the nib along with a converter uh, so, so they purchase the kit and it comes with all that already pre-made. Now, uh, they are actually turning just two pieces uh, most of the time uh, uh, and this type of kit. So they're turning this portion right here and they're turning the barrel. So the cap and the barrel and then they put everything together, glue it together sometimes with, uh, I forgot the name, the fancy name for... Uh, crazy glue but uh, they, they glue them together so this one is made by a particular manufacturer here in Texas I believe in the uh, I think he's back in the Dallas Fort Worth area and it's made of carbon fiber so he had a carbon fiber blank and he turned on the lathe the barrel and then the cap portion and then put everything together everything kind of fits together i i don't put pens or i don't make pens so i don't know the exact specifics but i've seen some videos there's lots of videos on youtube about how they do this and like i said they are very similar if you see this one here this is actually made from wood from the uss constitution uh and this is actual oak from the deck when it was re retrofitted uh, some years ago and you'll see that similarity. We have a clip that looks very similar to this one here. And you have a cap finial. There's some a little bit of differences because like if you see the finials, but they're they're very similar too. And you have that same section nib. The nib sometimes will be the same nib. Uh, they're usually IPG or um, uh, what do you call that? Uh, Iridium Point Germany nibs, uh, generic nibs. Some uh, some people put uh, their own nibs. Some makers do. Then you have that same finial. So the only thing that was actually turned on this was were the two wood pieces on the barrel and the cap. They turned those and then they put the pen together. Everything else was purchased. Uh, this one was a gift from my brother. Again, this one here, I'm leaving this one to the last uh, for on purpose here. And this one was from a gentleman, uh, I think, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And then this one was from a local pen maker. This a friend had made for me uh, locally. And once again, you see that same, uh, there's a, a finial, a clip. This one's slightly different kit, slightly different materials. You have the cap band and you have that same or a similar looking uh, finial on the barrel end and then you have a section uh, usually these kits have metal sections and this one has a slightly different 
nib and feed. Um, nothing wrong with them. Uh, this is not a comment on manufacturers or pen making. Uh, just the, the uh, work involved is more in the cap and barrel and then putting everything together from the kit parts. So then you get to pen makers that are maybe a little bit more advanced. Maybe they have different equipment available to them. Uh, let's compare this one. This one is a kit pen. Uh, this one, I believe the cap is all one piece that came in the kit. And so is the finial. And the person uh, put in his own nib that he smoothed. And he, so this was a little bit more advanced. That's a number six nib. The only thing he turned was, I believe, this portion right here, this blue acrylic. And you open it up, and there's your converter. So there we go. Now, I believe that as he got better at pen making, then he got more advanced. So th this is what I would generally consider uh, pens coming from beginning pen makers um, because of so much of the pen being already made for you. But then, like I said, this is from a particular person, but then this pen here is made by the same person a few a few years after this one was made so his pen making technique was more advanced now so he, this is totally done on a lathe and it the cap was done on the lathe and now we have some insets there we have some curves here that this is his bamboo pen i believe he calls it so we have more like the bamboo grooves on there more inset so he turned the whole cap he turned the whole section a few screws to get that out he turned this whole section here and he turned the barrel uh, the only thing that was pre-made was the converter and the nib collar and nib nib section and uh, this pen is supremely smooth. This particular pen maker was actually really, really good smoothing techniques on his nibs. And uh, it, this one here, even though he was just starting out, uh, I believe, on turning pens, uh, his nib smoothing technique is excellent. And, but you can tell he's he's gotten more advanced. I don't know what type of equipment he has, um, but he was advancing into more, uh, I don't even know what you would call it. Uh, uh, well, minus the kit, basically. This is another one that's not a kit made of um, French or vintage French celluloid, I was told. Now, between this one and this one, I can see, I don't know if it was done on purpose or whatever, but when you unscrew this one, it's very smooth to operate. Very, very smooth. On this one, again, I don't know if it's because of tools, if it's purposely done uh, or skill, but it is really tough to get it, get it going. And it's not smooth until you get a few turns out. Same nib, again, the, the uh, um, section and the barrel were all turned. And this is going into a little bit more advanced technique than this one, because now we have an ink window. So here he had to glue portions together to get this ink window. And again, you turn this and it's very, very tight until it gets to a certain point. So we've got a little bit more advanced technique here. And then as you put it back in, it gets tight again. I don't know if you can hear that. It's, it doesn't want to turn easily. Same thing. But it does make it so that the cap does not unscrew. 
uh, by itself. I've, I've had situations where I've had this pen in a pen case and I'll come back to it and the cap is a little bit undone here and so uh, it has its drawbacks. It's easier to uncap but it's easier to uncap uh, even when uh, you're not using it. Now here's a pen it's slightly different from another manufacturer. This is Ebonite. Um, these are completely hand turned. Um, except for the section. So this is a, a, another pen that's a little bit of a hybrid, I guess you could say, because this has a section that comes off a Schaefer, Schaefer pen. But the finial here and the cap and the barrel were all turned by hand. And so you can kind of even see there's some irregularities in the surface. I don't know if you could see it in the reflection there. Let's see if I can get it to reflect. And you can actually feel the irregularity in the barrel when you run your hand around here. You can actually feel it. And, and then this is something that kind of, you can tell, this cap is a little bit off here. So it kind of sits taller on this side because of the way the clip sits in there. And then it kind of looks crooked when you look at it uh, in certain at certain angles. And you can definitely see the tooling tooling marks there all across the the cap and the barrel and the the uh, uh, the whole surface of the pen here you can see those tooling marks whereas these have been polished obviously these are acrylic and this is ebonite ebonite I believe is a little bit harder to polish um, especially if you're doing it completely by hand but this is polished to perfection here there, I don't see any tooling marks on this pen and then uh, now here we're going into a little bit more advanced pen making technique now the cap finials barrel section everything was turned on this one um, and this now has some cap bands metal cap bands in here mixed in in this so now we're going a little bit more advanced technique section turned also and uh, some people might recognize that that logo and very smooth threads there's a converter so the only thing again that is not turned and I believe the lathe used for this particular pen was a, a, a little bit more advanced than your typical lathe, say, used for this this pen over here in Ebonite. Probably some sort of computer-controlled lathe. And uh, we have some markings here. This is, you know, going a little bit more adva advanced technique in a handmade pen. Or uh, not handmade, a uh, custom pen. Then we get to these two pens here. These are ebonite, polished to perfection. It's uh, we have an ink window. Uh, the cap, the section, and the barrel were all turned, and a, this one has an advanced filling system, or not advanced, but an, a filling system that's not typically found. So this is called a bulb filler. You just got an ink sack there. You put the uh, the nib and section into ink, squeeze this here, and then it, that fills the pen. And you can see it through the ink window here. So obviously, this is a more advanced than any of the pens I've shown up to this point. And you can see the seam very slightly and there's a high polished gloss on there and this this pen maker uses uh, advanced machinery uh, computer controlled lathe um, and I think they just upgraded their their equipment and this is another pen by the same pen maker again this one is not as advanced in the uh, in the filling section is just a regular cartridge converter but the high gloss polish and fit and finish on this is excellent um, 
and then we have a cartridge converter that this pen can also be eyedropper you just put silicone grease on the threads and you're good to go and a very nice ebonite but again high gloss on there high gloss finish they took some time to get this polished and if you compare it to this you can see the roughness there of the ebonite it's no comparison but it's just related to the tools that uh a specific pen maker has uh, tools skills um they're gonna vary and it's not to uh, say one pen maker is better than the other it's just different levels of uh penmanship or not penmanship pen makership is that a word no the different levels of skill and tools tool availability but again this is going to be a pen from a kit these are going to be from kits they're turning mostly just the barrel in the cap and then gluing everything together uh, these are going to be more advanced where everything is turned by the pen maker um, and they're going to have little things like bands cap bands because this was another gluing technique to get acrylic glued to metal glued to acrylic glued to metal glued to acrylic uh and then turning everything uh something like that but that's all i have for now uh please like this video subscribe and i appreciate it thank you bye